Sorry I haven't did a video in a couple of days, but I went, I was going to do a Superstar review yesterday, but uh, I couldn't because I couldn't find the video for it. Um, and I was going to do it today, but I can't find it. So, tomorrow, hopefully I'll be able to do um, Smackdown and Superstars. It's time to do raw predictions. I wanted to do another raw review, but the week is almost over. Well, the week is over, so hopefully next week I'll be able to have a full raw review for all my WWE fans. Um, I must say sorry if the my voice quality is bad, but right now I'm sick and it's just awful, really. I'm just, because the sickness is making me tired, and I have to do this video, so. I'm still trying to make myself do this video, so. I was saying sorry in advance if this video may not be as good as the other videos. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm trying to get over this cold. I don't know, you know, the seasons is changing. Some days it's hot, some days it's cold, you know. But, I'm going to do this TNA review. Um, this is TNA review for September the 20th, 2012. This is actually, well, yesterday, it happened yesterday. Um, it was open fight night, and the show opened with uh, Hulk Hogan and Shaq backstage, which was a good way to open the show. It would have been nice if Shaq actually stepped into the ring, though. That would have been. I think Shaq was on WWE. I think he's on WWE Raw. I think he was. Like two years ago. It would have been nice to see him in the ring, though. But it was good that he was there. Um, but the first official match of the night was AJ Styles and Kurt Angle versus Chavo and Hernandez. Chavo Hernandez are a really, really good team. So, uh, like I said, AJ um, Styles, and Angle, and they called out Chavo Hernandez. Um, like I said, it was a good match. It was a good way to open the show. Um, sorry, uh, Daniels and Kazarian, they were watching up on the stage. You know, it was an awesome match. And AJ was seconds away from it in a match. But there was interference by Daniels and Kazarian. So, we have to see how that plays out next week. Since next week is Championship Thursday. AJ should have won the match. But Daniels and Kazarian interfered. And then Hulk Hogan comes out with this black bat. And he announces that there will be a triple threat tag team match for the tag team championship. Uh, excuse me, at Bound for Glories, the Bound for Glories. I must say, I'm sorry, this cold is really getting on me. Um, Tina is is really starting to get more and more interesting, you know. I like it. It's like really, really interesting. Like I said that last week, but I don't know. I like it. I just like it more. It just seems like TNA is better than SmackDown and Raw put together, which sounds crazy. And everyone knows I'm a WWE fan. I'm going to always be a WWE fan, but t the storylines or TNA are just better. 
Why would they have writing the storylines for TNA? They're good. The WWE writers suck. It's just, it just sucks. It's just the same old storylines with different people. Um, but TNA is interesting though. I mean, I like watching TNA now. Uh, I mean, it makes you want to watch, you know? Well, uh, there was a gut check scheduled for uh, later that night. I need some freaking tissue. Um, I can't pause. Oh, crap. I don't have any tissue. Oh, uh, there was a gut check scheduled later that night. Um, uh, I need to go on intermission real fast. Right. I'll be right back. Take a look at this. Look at that. Okay, sorry about that, but I needed some tissue. Um, there was a gut check scheduled for later that night. Um, it was Evan. He's only 18 years old. Um, he's really young. Um, to me, I'll get back to that because it comes up on it a little bit. Um, but also, Hulk Hogan talks with Josh. The lawyer guy, a bis brother, basically says he has the evidence at hand, which will somehow confirm who the aces and eights are. And he said he's on his way to the arena, so he should arrive. Hopefully, that was the plan, but it didn't turn out that way. And then the gut check, it was Evan. Like I said, he's 18 years old. I think the guy is too young. Maybe he should come back in two years or four years when he's training. I mean, he went against Douglas Williams, um, but Douglas Williams, he destroyed the kid. I mean, he dominated the kid. He was just throwing the kid around, kicking him, stomping him. I mean, the kid, I mean, he hung in there. He didn't give up, but he isn't ready to join TNA. Um, I say come back in two or four years. He needs some more training. He has determination, but he needs to work on his wrestling skills some more. But Douglas Williams won via submission. This James Storm comes up to talk about Bobby Roode. And I thought while uh, James Storm was talking about Bobby Roode, I, I noticed that there was a guy in the audience with a CM Punk t-shirt on. And I thought that was funny because I think it's funny for somebody to come to a TNA event with a WWE shirt on. Just like, wouldn't it be funny if someone came to WWE with a TNA shirt on? I just saw the, the CM Punk shirt in the background. And, you know, I thought that was kind of funny. But, um, then James Storm comes out. And basically, well, basically James Storm comes out Bobby Roode. He, could, he really didn't want to wrestle. He didn't want to wrestle, really. And he, he was in his dress suit, so he didn't have his wrestling attire. So he could fight. He walks backstage. Hulk Hogan gives him three minutes to decide whether he wants to fight James Storm or if he basically wants to get laid off for the rest of the year. No money, no action, no championships, etc. James Storm decides to come down to the ring. And not James Storm. Sure. Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode comes down to the ring while he's taking off his shirt, his tie, his blazer. James Storm attacks him while he's on a ramp. I mean, this was like the best match of the night, really. It was a una it was so unofficial because they were like and they were hardly ever in the ring. Ninety five percent of the match was outside the ring. That's what just made it so much better. It was fan participation. You no, know, James Storm grabbed a little beer from one of the fans. Uh. He rammed uh, Bobby Roode's face against a uh, fan's foot. Um, 
It was also funny because a lady was screaming at Bobby Roode. She was screaming, F you, and <laughs> it was all this and everything. And the camera, you could tell he tried to block it out, but they couldn't. We, they one thing they blocked out was you. We still heard the F part. She said it like two times. He screamed at her. She was yelling at him, saying, hit me. And the lady was just going off on Bobby Roode. It was just awful. I mean, you can hear everything if you go back and watch it. I mean, uh, that was like a f physical, brutal match. It was so unofficial. I mean, they were all over the place. That was like the that was the best match of the night, in my opinion. I mean, they beat their bodies up. I mean, they tore their bodies up during that match, you know. But basically, uh. It was just all over the place, so the referee had no choice but to throw the match out. So, even though the bell rung, the referee couldn't get any order to start a decent match. Because every time they would try to get in the ring, somebody would break the 10 count. Or they they did, they did weren't hardly ever in the ring. Like I said, 95% of the match was outside the ring. Um, it was a great match, really. Unofficial match, really. It was hard to say who would have been the winner. They both beat each other up. I mean, it was a good match. I can't lie about that. You know? And the match goes backstage and it, the camera cuts off. I I didn't like that. They should have... That's one part where WWE beats TNA. Because the camera... Normally, WWE has camera backstage for stuff like that. Because the camera just stops. Because, you know, the cameras run, run on a wire. So the cameras can only go back a certain distance. So the cameraman had to stop right there. So we don't know what happened backstage. But if it was on WWE, they would have had a camera back there. And it would have continued. I wish they would have showed the continuation of it. But, you know, it is what it is. And also, they beat up the referee, uh, Brian uh, Hefner, Hefner. Which is, I guess, that he's related to... Earl Habner, Habner, you know, whatever, his, the famous referee. So there's some family referees going on. I I just thought that was kind of interesting, you know. That he has his, I had no idea what his relationship would be to him. He's too young, maybe his grandson. That could be his grandson. It's t he looks too young to be his son. And then after that, Hulk Hogan, uh... Hold up, hold up. Hulk Hogan gets a call from Aces and Eights, which will set up, uh, which will happen later on in the night. Dang, this is a long review. <laughs> um, and there's also a video of Austin Aries and um, Hardy talking backstage. Ah, <sighs> awesome. I know. Oh yeah, his face paint. Jeff Hardy face paint. He has some nice. Well, the one that they showed before that it was good, but I like. Everyone knows I'm a Jeff Jeff Hardy fan, and I like Jeff Hardy face paint. It was fun. I wanted to see Jeff Hardy wrestle live. I saw Jeff Hardy wrestle live in 2009. That's back when he was still with WWE. That was like a month before he left. It was fun. Um. He had nice face paint. Um, then we had some TNA knockout. Uh, uh, some knockout action. I want to say Diva, but that's WWE. Uh, WWE Diva's division is horrible. I mean, it's really, really horrible. I could do a whole video on how horrible the Divas division is. But this is about TNA, so I'm going to try to leave the WWE stuff out of this. But Tara Cross uh, Chrissy, who used to, from my understanding, she used to be a former TNA knockout. And basically, she calls her in a ring, and Miss uh, Tessmacher says that. <laughs> not really sure I know. Um, Miss Tessmacher says, I mean, sorry. Um, <laughs> Miss Chrissy says that. 
Miss Tess Mocker is her favorite wrestler. Miss Terry doesn't like that, so she grabs her by the hair, kind of chokes her up. Um, and then Miss Tess Mocker comes out and comes to her defense. And basically, Terry goes backstage, and Brooke was unhappy, so Brooke says there will be consequences for Tara next week. So, who knows what that would mean. Tara probably will be in a match. I, can't, I mean, what is Brooke really going to do, really? So, you have to wait to see next week how Tara will be disciplined for her actions in the ring. You hardly, we don't see too much of Brooke. It would be nice if she became a TNA knockout. But we don't see too much of her. But, you know, we see more Hogan. But he is the... In charge of the show, so I guess it goes that way. Like I said earlier in my review, even though this is probably my longest TNA review I've done in a minute. Um, next week is Championship Thursday, and Hulk Hogan comes out again. Hulk Hogan comes out like three times during the show, which is funny because. Raw and SmackDown Dungeon Managers, they may come out like once or twice. You see Hulk Hogan come out like three times on the show. You know, that's just awesome, but... Hogan comes out again with his black bat. And we heard that Joseph, the lawyer guy, a bitch brother, has been hostage. Now, they're just doing this as part of the storyline. They're delaying. They want people to keep watching. Because you remember last week they said... Next week, we're going to have some big evidence. And then this week comes, he gets... Um... He gets kidnapped. So, then, next week, it's going to be the same thing. They're probably going to... We probably want to find out who is behind the... Uh, the Aces and Eights till Bound for Glory series come. Because they keep delaying it. Every week is something else. I guarantee you, next week, is going to be something else. I guarantee it. Like, I, I was... I wanted to see... A little bit of evidence of what was going on. But he gets kidnapped. And next week is going to be something else. So I'd say we probably not going to know who's behind the Aces and Eights for at least another month. Um, but Hulk, the Aces and Eights, um, they invited Hulk Hogan to their clubhouse. Whatever that is. Uh, next week. So Hulk Hogan will go there. Not sure if he'll go there by himself. May bring his bat, but he's invited to their clubhouse. Um, and the Aces and Eights, the one the main, the guy behind the mask. All of them wear masks, but the, the main guy behind the operation. He destroys the laptop. Basically, what looks like a sludge, sludge hammer. Um, and then he looks like he knocks Joseph over the head with it. Knocks him out. But th this Aces and Ace storyline is good. It's fun. I like watching TNA. I really do. It's interesting, you know? I could, I mean, I could watch that for, like, hours. If TNA was three hours, like, raw, that would be... I don't know. Would that be good? Maybe not. I, I, the two hours is fine, but I like... I mean, it's. I enjoy watching it. I don't really enjoy watching... I'm sorry I keep going off of random stuff, but... I don't really watch... I don't really don't enjoy watching, you know, um, SmackDown and Raw anymore. I just watch it just because I'm just used to, like, I'm just used to watching. Like, it's in my schedule to watch it. I'm, like, used to watching it, you know. I've been watching it for 10 years, so if you do something for 10 years, you know, you just stick with it. Just like if you've been smoking for 10 years, you keep on smoking probably till you quit. But, you know, I just keep watching in hopes that one day the storylines will get better. Because these, these writers are awful. <sighs> Sorry, I need to take some medicine. But, um, t almost 20 minutes. I didn't mean to talk this long, but this cold is really destroying me. <laughs> But, uh, then we have Austin Aries versus Bully Ray. And th there was a lot of fan interaction during this night. Um, 
Basically, Bully Ray cusses all the fan because the fan touches him. And then Bully Ray is talking outside the the ring, talking. Austin Aries says, enough is enough. He jumps over the ring, does like a flip over the top rope, lands on Bully Ray, takes him out. Um, which sets up for the match. It was a good match. It was back in... It was back and forth match. Um, Austin Aries should have won the match. Just like AJ got screwed early, earlier in the um, the show. Austin Aries got screwed. Because he had him in the submission hold. And Ray did tap out. But the referee was down and out. So, you know, Billy Ray gets out of the submission hole. He grabs his chain, hits Austin Aries with it, throws the chain outside the ring. And referee, one, two, three. And then Hardy comes out in his pink wrestling attire, which I like. Was he, was he wearing pink? I think Jeff Hardy wore that. May not have been the same one, but Jeff Hardy wore that when they wrestled. The pink, the hot pink suit. He comes out in his face paint. He basically runs out. He didn't hit Austin Aries, but he picks up the championship. So basically, you know what that means. Jeff Hardy runs the championship. It would have been... And they just push each other back and forth, and the show goes off. It was a good TNA impact. I enjoyed it. You know? I, I kind of I'm kind of mad that they delayed that aces and eight storyline that they're going to keep the land I would have wanted to see the evidence that was on a laptop. I wanted to see that And it would have been we yes Jeff Hardy was there, but you know, I'm a Jeff Hardy fan So I like to see Jeff Hardy in action, you know It was good that he came out at the end of the show He had a little video segments, you know throughout the show, but I like seeing Jeff Hardy in the ring but it was it was a good TNA impact. I give it a nine point five out of ten. It was a good TNA. I liked it. I could have watched that show for hours, you know. But you know, it was a good show. I liked it. Dude. I didn't mean for this review to go on that long, but I'm like out of it really mentally. But it was a good TNA impact. I enjoyed it. I really did. Um, my schedule wise, I say my schedule every week, but I don't really ever follow it. <laughs> um, let me see, let me see. Today's, well, still it's 11.46 p.m. Friday, 11.46 p.m. So tomorrow's Saturday, so tomorrow I'm doing Smackdown and Superstars, hopefully. Sunday I'm doing Raw Predictions. Tuesday, I'm doing Raw Review. Wednesday, I'm doing Your Questions Answered Part 4. Thursday, I'm doing Superstars. Friday, I'm doing TNA. And Saturday, I'm doing SmackDown. Yeah. That's just my schedule of the week. I have no idea if it's going to go that, that way. I almost didn't do this TNA review today, but I, I just felt so awful today. But we're going to start doing some more new videos. Um, different, not, not necessarily uh, wrestling reviews. I'm talking about, I will start doing different videos other than the reviews. That's probably... Uh, I want to say, I want to say next week. I probably, I probably do a video about it this Sunday. I'm still doing other stuff. It depends because I don't really have that much free time. I really don't. But next week, if it's not next week, the week after that, I'm going to start. You're going to see some other videos up. Besides my wrestling reviews. I didn't mean to talk for this long. I really did. But um, this is my wrestling review for September 20th, 
2012. It's almost October. Halloween is almost here. Um, then Thanksgiving, then Christmas. Uh, sorry if the quality isn't excellent, but I have, I, like I said, I have sick, and this cold is really like breaking me down, really. But um, this is my TA review. So if you like it, can like it. If you dislike it, you can dislike it. Leave your comments. If if it requires a response, uh, you will get one within twenty four hours. Um, I told you my schedule. Uh, new videos are coming soon, so make sure you check out my channel and make sure you subscribe.